Okay, so if everyone's all right with that, I'm going to do the talk in English. Yeah. yeah, okay. So basically, like I said before, I didn't plan to do this, so I thought maybe we can just do some sort of a Q&A or something. So if anyone has questions, just start, and I know myself, I'll just continue talking probably. So <laughs> anyone has a question or... Yeah, so, okay, I didn't think about that because I actually wrote down a few things mm -hmm. very randomly on my computer, but maybe I'll stop this for a second and put up my very messy notes because I think that will probably be more helpful for all of you. Well, I guess you can read it. Um, can I sit down for talking or? Okay. So for promoting meetups, I think, well, social media is such a complex uh, thing that I still consider myself as a newbie, although I have been working for quite some time with it. Um, well, I think the first thing you always have to ask yourself is what do you want to do and why do you want to do it? Um, so I guess for a meetup, that would be to raise awareness for people to come or in the long run for people to come back, for people to constantly see your brand, to see your event, that even in the beginning, if they don't come, they will show up eventually because you're doing such a great job at social media and everyone wants to go to your event. Um, so kind of try to come up with a strategy, I would say. So. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a non-profit meetup, I guess, so you can't really invest money, right? So, um, yeah, what I did in the beginning, I used to work at, um, at a startup and they didn't have much money to invest either. So what I did is just use Google Calendar and use their, well, what's it called? Um, just their map to lay out, okay, on January 1st, I'm going to post a picture of, well, it was a fitness company, so I'm going to post a picture of this new product that we have um, that I took a month ago. Um, and yeah, I just planned like that. Um, so January 1st is going to be this post on Instagram, for example. Um, and then the next day I have this post planned for Facebook. Um, and just, you know, do it like that and then just use the alarm on your phone or on your computer and give yourself a little reminder that that's what you already have planned to post. So I know a lot of big companies plan like month ahead in what they're going to um, post. Um, of course, that's not actually possible um, for everyone, but um, kind of come up with a plan when you're gonna post it and what you're going to post. Um, and why is that relevant for someone? I think that's a, or at least for me, that's something I always see people doing wrong. Um, wh where are you giving value to someone? Why should someone consume what you're putting out there? Um, so of course your event is going to be amazing, but so are a lot of events. Um, so I think it's really important to, um, yeah, just come up with some reason why you're better than others and why someone need to f needs to follow you. And I think especially with social media, you have to constantly remind them again why they're doing it. Um, you don't just want to tell how amazing you are, but you want to show them that they need to follow you pretty much. Um, yeah. Does that already kind of answer the question? Anyone else? Just specific or less specific question? Are you having l something in your company or yeah, anyone need input with anything? Otherwise, I'll just kind of continue talking about these randoms. Yeah, so if you have money, you can do paid advertisement and on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. Um, but it's, well, at least from my experience, you have to make sure that it's worth it 
I think, or from my experience, if you invest just a tiny little bit of money, it doesn't do much for you. So I feel like you have to talk about bigger numbers in order to actually reach a lot of people. Um, I just tried it like with my own Instagram account uh, a few times and I invested not so much money because it was my private account and my private money. Um, and of course I don't, I don't use like crazy techniques just for my personal Insta Instagram account, but of course I try to follow some rules um, and it didn't bring me much, not even many clicks on my profile. So not many people actually interacted with that, what I posted. So I feel like, and that's a big part, I, I made a very small um, graphic in the amount of time that I had. Um, so I think it's very important to use call to actions also. So I guess we have created awesome content, but just like basic marketing, if you have the most amazing product and no one is going to see it, no one is going to buy it. So it's the same with social media, I'd say. And call to actions always work, always. Yeah, I see this on YouTube videos, on Instagram all the time. If someone asks a question like, oh, how do you do this? Or just any question that's kind of connected to the post you've made, people are going to interact way more than they would um, if you didn't do that. So I'd say use a lot of them, but of course make them uh, connected with the post. So don't just ask, which, oh, what's your favorite color? Come to my event. That does make a lot of sense. Um, so yeah, they, they do work. They do work all the time, I'd say. Yeah. That, if, if what you're posting is good, then it works. Because a lot of people do use social media, and I guess a lot of my friends even do, and we're like the the age range that uses a lot of Instagram and stuff. And they don't really actually use Instagram. They just post like, oh, I had a great night with my friends or something like that. But um, yeah, like actually use it and post something that's relevant. And then if the question is relevant or if you're just telling them to do anything really that's related to what you're doing or even share my post, if you like it, chances are they will. And if you don't, they won't. That's pretty much that because people don't know that, they don't know the algorithm of Instagram. They don't know why it's important to comment on things if you don't care. So sometimes I tell my friends, please comment my Instagram picture because this is my job. And I want companies to see that I kind of have a reach on social media. So um, yeah, I tell my friends to comment because it helps me. But a lot of people don't know that it actually helps because Instagram ranks posts that have a lot of interaction m better and then it will show up to more people um, if it has a lot of interaction in it. So it doesn't really, ma well, of course you don't want a stupid comment and actually uh, you have to at least have four words. So in Instagram sees it as like a, a good comment if you have like, oh cool, that's it's not good for the Instagram algorithm because it will think it's spam. So, but, but tell people, it always works. Tell people, write a comment, and even if it's your friends in the beginning, if it's anyone basically, tell them to write good comments. Um, in my opinion, or from my experience, um, some like upcoming influencers, which is a whole other thing, they use um, connection groups on Telegram, on WhatsApp, whatever. Um, where they just are all in this together and just comment on each other's posts because that'll help their Instagrams grow if their content is good. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have many thoughts on that. <laughs> well, first of all, we talked about this before uh, when we came. Well, when we came up uh, with the the content to do this speech, actually, so you didn't miss it like that. But um, we talked about that. From from my experience, it's better to just take a few accounts and then actually like do this planning and plan ahead if you can. And most times you can um, plan ahead when you're going to post what. And then if you have that, it's easier to keep up with all the content. But also if you have like eight different places where you have to update it, it gets hard if you're just one person or even if you're more people than that. Um, so maybe try to look where the people are. And you said like, oh, someone doesn't have Facebook and then they want something else. But I think most likely if you have like three or four different networks, someone is going to be on one of them and like four is a lot i'd say so um and there's different age groups for facebook and instagram and stuff where people are at so maybe even at your meetup ask them where do you get your information and then they always say they're coming from very different places but but do you update like so you said it's hard to update all of them frequently right And it's not working. <laughs> well, maybe that's also a problem of being like confident to ask in public. Yeah. I don't know. I, I see that a lot that people don't want to be public about what they're saying, yeah. which for me is not understandable. But <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, maybe maybe talk about that as well. And I feel like sometimes if you say to people, please just ask them and then you can explain again to them that, you know, we're trying to make this more popular. We're trying to make this more well known and provide the best support for you that we can. And actually how it's going to happen is you asking this publicly and maybe it helps someone else. And I feel like if you, it's a lot of work in the beginning, it always is. But uh, I feel like if you've reached that point and more people understand, I feel like you, you always have to kind of coach your community to be what you need them to be. But it works. But it's a lot of work. <laughs> it always is. <laughs> so is that question answered or do you want more information on that? Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, but honestly, I can't answer it because I have personally never used Hotsuit in like a company's uh, circumstance. Uh, I've just people just told me that they use it sometimes, and I've I've had the the demo to look, you know, what it can do and stuff, but. Honestly, I think I can't answer that question because I don't have experience in that. I don't want to say something wrong. It depends. I'd say if you have a lot of things to post, I'd say yes. Um, but in generally, when you're coming to the point of connecting, you always want to be online when you post something. Um, I always try whenever I post something for whoever, I try to be online for like at least half an hour after that. Of course, that's more necessarily when you have actually a community that is going to interact uh, with your content. But always take the time, like I wrote down, and be there for the people. And it doesn't matter if it's one or two people. Uh, my Instagram, I call my personal Instagram, is not that big, but I do have a big community of people that I don't know. And I think it's because I always took the time to interact with them and to, 
you know, give them answers to the questions they ask and all of that. And I try to do that quickly also because of the algorithm. But I do have to say the algorithm is more interesting when you actually are trying to be big in the Instagram or Facebook game or something, which I guess from the start is hard to uh, reach. Not, po not impossible, but hard to reach with a local event. Um, but yeah, I'd say automation can be helpful. And maybe for the beginning, if that's going to, going to make you post, do it. Because if you're going to miss it, you're not going to post. So I'd say if otherwise you're not going to do it, do it. But also make sure that you're like on top of your game with uh, answering and interacting with the people. And I think that's just something I always tell that to people in um, um, what is it called? When I go some some place to hire me or for them to hire me, I always say that I grew up with this. So for me, and I've always been like an internet kid. So um, I always tell the people that you know, just be natural. But for some people, it's not natural to comment on a stranger's Instagram posts and stuff. For me, it is. But for a lot of people, it's not. Um, but um, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> now I'm out. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I kind of went from there to there because it's uh, connected. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's always it's super connected. So um, it's always if you do one thing, like posting regularly, that's just the beginning. And yeah, like I said, I'd say to sum up your question, use automation if that's going to make you post. And then if you have a lot of things to post, I'd use it too. But otherwise, I think it's fine to just start or it's, it's better to just start because you can spend hours and hours to research the best program to just post for you and stuff. And in that hour you could have, or in those hours, you could have already planned a month of social media action. Yeah. So. Uh, what about uh, marketing tools? Because uh, there are so much tools now on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, you have so many uh, emails coming in. Yeah. And, so on. and it's really hard to learn any other tool. What do you think about that? Do you have any free tools? Well, I don't know of any free tools, honestly. So it's like Hootsuite and others yeah. where you have to pay for the service because it is complex. So, of course, they want to take your money for that. <laughs> Um, what I did in the beginning for the startup, I just tried to take a lot of like physical notes to where I have to be with my brain. And then for example, for emails, I used help desk. No, wait, what? I don't remember. I don't remember. Zendesk, right. Um, <laughs> and, uh, well, that was like, that was helping me to stay on track with all the emails, but we paid for it. Um, but otherwise, I'd say don't make it complicated in the beginning. When I imagine like a, a meetup or something, don't make it complicated. Don't spend hours in researching the best tools that Audi or someone is going to use. Um, eventually, that's not what you need. That's money you probably can't spend anyway. Um, and just just do it, like Nike already <laughs> said. But I think it's easier to just try to to ha like get an overview in however you as a person work, I'd say. Like I'm a physical person, I'd la rather write something down or like create a wall in my room or something in my office to, you know, this is all the things I need to take care of. Maybe you're different, maybe you're more digital in that case. <laughs> um, and you just want to have it online or somewhere, just create something that works for you and don't make it too complicated. Uh, for me, it's also important uh, to actually get to the social 
Yeah. Yeah, that would be my question as well. Do you want to know where you're mentioned or do you want to just be able to post from one place, for example? Okay. <laughs> uh, well, from my experience, it's always, you have to always pay for those because it that's complex, that's, yeah. I I had to write a few apps, for example, just to make it easier on my phone, but none of them were something I'd recommend. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah, and I think in the beginning it's, of course, yeah, if you get one tweet back, it's a lot of work to just always look, oh, did someone tweet something at me? But I think... There we go back to just create good stuff and be present. And of course, I'd say in the beginning, it doesn't really matter if you answer within an hour, half an hour or something, but answer, definitely answer. And don't be like, oh, now three days have passed. Maybe he done, or he don't even doesn't even need my answer anymore. That doesn't matter. Just answer anyway and maybe ask if you can help him another way or something. I feel like on social media, I always say that be if you're a really nice person, be 10 times this nice on social media <laughs> because they don't feel you through, you know, what you're doing. I'd say, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's to that, yeah. <laughs> I think it depends. For example, I just currently quit my job at a news agency, a huge one in Europe, and um, they their Facebook is their biggest channel by far. That's where they get by far the most interaction. So that kind of maybe brings me to maybe your people are not on Facebook and maybe try to use something else. Or maybe, I don't know what you're posting on Facebook. Maybe try to use more call to actions, maybe try posting different things and that's also a big thing like i don't know what I, what are you using it for yeah but it, like reaching it with what do you want to promote a product do you just want to represent your company or yeah Of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I think that it's always a difficult part because I think that's the thing where it's hard to actually give, like I said, it's, I think it's so important to give value to someone that's following you. And when you have a new product, of course, you think it's, and it probably is adding value to that person or that person's life pretty much. Um, but I think maybe it's also because it is so hard to actually present something that's not physically there, um, where maybe you have to come up with a more creative strategy um, to make it more touchable or to, to give them more of a reason to do something with it. And I think especially with cases like that, um, why should someone comment or like or something they were like, oh, thanks for the info, probably. Yeah. And, and then, fine, of course, but you want more interaction, of course. So maybe use more more call to actions or, well, you probably am, uh, are an answering all the questions and stuff on it. But um, I think call for actions always work. Mm -hmm. 
um, where at that TV broadcasting company I used to work at, we could always see instantly when we didn't ask a question or we did ask a question. And it seems so stupid and simple, but it always works. And yeah, I think maybe just before, because I feel like a lot of companies that I see, they, even when they're super big, they just post and they're posting their interest. Mm -hmm. um, then again, to the TV company, they, they are reporters. So they post what they think is like a really brilliant piece that they sent on TV or something with it. And it's not necessarily what the public is interested to see. So of course you have your product, you're going to present this product, but maybe you can come up with a strategy, you know, what's in it for the people. And then again, I'm always very positive for tell them what you want them to do. And most likely they will. So I guess that that's a big part where you can actually grow the interaction for, for your company, but also, try to use other channels maybe but it's a it's a lot of work to just create a new one and feed that to make it better than the one you've already built <laughs> but anything is possible right <laughs> yeah uh, if you have any more questions we okay <laughs> But it was, was it a blog post or something or what was the content of it? Well, of course, maybe that's always the chance. Someone, people just randomly scroll through Instagram and Facebook nowadays. So they see something, it happens to myself all the time. I like an Instagram post or a Facebook post. I'm like, wait, what? And I just scroll back and sometimes even, you know, redo the like because I don't actually like it at all. Um, you know, but I feel like that happens. And also maybe what you did, you know, the, the advertisement looked good, but it was not appealing enough for people to actually click on it and do more with it. It's a, a lot of times it's just very small things that can make it or break it. Because, well, of course, you probably, you know, clicked all the things who you just want to reach, what I, they're doing in their life. So hopefully you've went into the right pond <laughs> to, to get the people. That's the first thing. And then, of course, it's always, you know, the question of is that relevant to the person that it, you know, showed up to? And maybe sometimes it's just, you know, there's people, of course, you all know them that just talk about uh, SEO all the time. Maybe the title was not appealing enough. Maybe the graphic was not appealing enough. Or maybe, you know, that person wasn't actually that interested in the content anyway. But it's it's hard to tell from a distance for sure. So you thought there was like automatic liked, like, you know, bots or something or? Maybe you were just surprised because so many people <laughs> Actually, well, but, but yeah, it's weird that they didn't click on it. That um, I mean, it's always more people liking it than actually using it. But but it's hard to tell from a distance uh, why exactly uh, that didn't happen. But yeah, can't answer that. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's a lot. I think especially when you're not actually okay, there, you invested money. But I think when you're not looking to invest a lot of money, just trial and error. It's a lot of trial and error and it doesn't take long for you to see certain stigmas and stuff, you know, to see, oh, people are doing this when I do this and people are not doing this when I don't do this or, you know, all these ways. Um, yeah, when I started, well, I, I studied something with media and when I started doing that, a lot of my, or when I actually got that first internship um, at the startup, I managed to gain them 15,000 followers and I hadn't done any work related stuff with Instagram, but I just use it and I tried things and just, I, I knew what worked and what didn't. And that was already, that, that was just me using my free time to try things and see what happens pretty much. Yeah. But of course not everyone is a student and has time for that. <laughs> it depends. It all depends on what you're doing. So some people say, 
post just frequently, whatever that means. Some people say post like one or two, three times a day. But it, you know, it, it all comes back to do you ha actually have something to say in that moment? If you're just spamming people with your content and no one really cares about it because it's not actually relevant, why would you post it? And I think it's, it's also, it all comes back to if you already have a large following, I'd say it's more important or way more important to constantly post because you're in the algorithm game. But if you're not anyway, I'd just say post when you can. But, you know, hope because also the algorithm is, it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of things constantly updating and stuff. And a lot of people are really annoyed by it because you're doing something and it works. And then the next day they change the algorithm and you're just not visible anymore. Um, but actually what I recently tried is not all, uh, everyone is going to do that, but if you're new on Instagram and the, the people coming to you are new, you're, you're visible to them. So my friend uh, recently unfollowed me to see if she refollowed me, she would m see my posts again. And it, she did. So the people that follow you, um, you know, new, they are going to see your posts. But if they have been following you for three years and they never used your stuff, they're not going to see that anyway because Instagram thinks he doesn't actually, or the person doesn't actually like it. So, and that goes back to have people do what you want them to do because in the end they're not, maybe they care and that goes back to your question as well. Maybe they, they care to see your content, but if they never interact with it, they might not see it anymore, although it's their platform, you know? So it really depends. I'd say better post something that's of value as often as you can than being like, okay, but I have to post like once a day in order to stay relevant because I feel like, especially with word, word uh, camps and meetups, it's not actually manageable to post that often. Yeah. So to gain more uh, attendees, pay more, or sell more um, tickets, and so on. And otherwise, when you're in a company, so you have a, a, a short, middle, and long term strategy Plan. to be aware of that there's not a one time event. So it's more common. Yeah. But also, um, I don't know if you know Gedankentanken. Gedankentanken, yeah. that's a company that, exactly. And um, I see their event constantly on Facebook and it's just a one-time event, you know? Yeah. I don't know exactly what they're doing. Of course, I don't work there, but um, that's an example of an event that just happens once. It's actually this November. And I think like even last November, I've already seen their advertisement like 10 times. So I think if it's a big event like WordCamp Europe or something, it's not, it's not completely out of line to actually, you know, have like a huge reach. But I also feel like as someone being completely new to the WordPress uh, community and the whole WordPress thing, actually, um, you know, it's for me, it's all about the community always. So that's why I'm here. Um, but I feel like sometimes the way it's something is seen inside like from all the people already using it already being in there is a different um way than you get new people to come in and it doesn't mean you have to show a different outside to what is inside but i think sometimes it's just basic marketing in the uh, end because 
like how I got here. Of course, it was my brother, um, but also it was like, oh, this sounds kind of like something I would like. But I think if the if the the uh, marketing, if the match message would be a different one, I would have come a year ago. And I think especially because nowadays so many people are working in the internet on the internet. Um, you know, there's a huge amount of people that could be or is probably interested in this kind of community. But the question is, are you actually speaking to them? And then we go again to who are you trying to talk to and how, how do you need to talk to them and where can you talk to them and all those sorts of questions. And I feel like it's a, especially with those types of events, um, it's always kind of a mixture on how much to plan in advance and ask yourself a lot of questions. Um, some of those that I wrote down or we just talked about and then just do it because in the end, if you're there, you're there. And if you're not there, you're not there. So if you didn't post anything or if you never post anything, nothing happened. So it doesn't matter how good your post is going to be that you're going to post in half a year. If no one, you know, then for six months, no one saw anything of you. So I think it's a mixture of, you know, planning and actually making a strategy and then just doing it. But I think, you know, it all comes down to content and giving value to someone. And then, then you have to see or look like, where can I reach those people? Maybe it's uh, good to invest in some Facebook ads, maybe not maybe tried and maybe it doesn't work, maybe it does. Because it's different for uh, all the companies, like she just said, maybe a Facebook page of someone works really, really well still, and then other people are just completely losing their people on Facebook. Or even um, the company that I used to work at, they stopped their Facebook at one point because their Instagram was blowing up and they were like, well, we look really good on Instagram. Why don't we show everyone that cares our Instagram instead of people seeing us like this still small company that we are not anymore on Facebook. So it's a constant uh, reviewing of things and then, you know, asking yourself pretty selflessly what you think people are going to want to see. Yeah, that was my very broad <laughs> answer to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You thought about some questions you have to ask yourself uh, before uh, sending some content out. Yeah. Um, do you have some kind of uh, uh, website or tool or checklist? Do you know? Or are you uh, able to uh, create some kind of checklist? Such a website? Yeah, <laughs> I definitely can. Um, I don't have it yet because I always want to do that. And it's so much work that I never started. And we just talked about that is not very efficient, <laughs> um, but I can definitely do that. I'd say I don't really know of one page exactly to take your information um, because I personally listen to all sorts of podcasts from very different people from very different niches. Um, and then I take everything they say and put it and try and again, ask myself, can I use this for this or maybe for this and stuff like that. So I'd say, I'll make a thing and I'll tweet it out. And if you care to download it, then you can download it. Might take a little time, but you know, I'm here. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the knowledge of the social media. So um, this would be really, really good to have a small checklist to say, okay, when you have uh, your um, monthly meeting, uh, do oh, this. Yeah. This and this and this. So uh, that's a kind of meetup. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, I guess. That's because that's a niche as well that makes it easier. But of course, I have never really... I'd rather talk about the things I've already done because then I know what works, what works not. I have not grown a social media for a meetup. So if anyone needs help with that, maybe I can even help you and we can test uh, if it actually works. But otherwise, of course, I, I'll prepare something and then you can check it off, hopefully. Yeah, uh, right. Um, and there are some pages uh, or handbook pages to help uh, organize the video group. So you can still take... Pressure is on. <laughs> Mine? Oh, yeah. Come on, please use this. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely let everyone know when it's finished. And then... Is a Google Doc better? Because I like to do stuff like that. Is that too complicated? I will. Oh, right. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. To get the questions and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but it's important. Yeah. Because you're giving something back to a community you are new to. And it's, I think it's really important to um, honor this kind of contribution. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, I'm really, really, really happy that you are here. Thank and, you. Um, from my part, um, to explain a little bit, um, I'm a oh. person in the community who is aware about. Um, Artists and speaker training, and I'm uh, really happy to see the speaker training uh, and motivation is working because she did her first talk on a webcam on her first webcam, and it's a good result of uh, awareness and um, motivation. So yeah, you d you did a great job doing this. <laughs> Thank you. And if anyone happens to have questions we can still talk always well my favorite podcast is the millionaire in yoga pants it's <laughs> it's a it's a well it's a blonde american woman that looks very i'd say standard but she talks about like very interesting topics regarding social media growth um she she is she is one of those people that definitely um, just works with a niche, but you can use it. Her just and she always invites uh, people that are very interesting. I I think so. She gives a lot of uh, great input on social media growth and um, yeah, that's my favorite. And Bucci Radio is great. That's from Amanda Bucci. She's a fitness YouTuber and Instagrammer, and um, yeah, she she started an Instagram course actually recently. And so she definitely has great knowledge. She has, I don't know, like 600,000 subscribers on Instagram, uh, fol followers on Instagram. So she's great. I listen to a lot of female podcasts. So I don't know if that really can properly answer your question. <laughs> They're great. <laughs> Thank you.